Hey guys, it's me again. Uh, I don't want to make too long of an introduction because my videos are way too long. Uh, forgive me, but I'm going to start really quick with a prayer, so bear with me. Lord, I pray and ask that you give me the words and speak through me, Lord, and, and give everyone eyes to see and ears to hear. When we listen, may it be with your ears, and when we see you, may it be with your eyes. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, a little dorky, but I, I think it's very important to do that in everything that I do. Uh, there was a few things I wanted to talk about today, mainly sheep. Did you know that the Bible refers to us as sheep over 200 times? Uh, God calls us sheep. Jesus calls us sheep. All over in the Bible, us humans, we are referred to as sheep. I never thought much about it until recently. I, I decided, let's look up some sheep, because I didn't know why, why sheep. I would like to be referred to as a lion, or a gorilla, or a bear, something powerful and cool. But I don't know much about sheep, so I looked them up. And I found out a few things. One, sheep have no fangs, no claws, uh, they don't have a roar. Butterflies have these big old wings with circles that look like big eyes, so they scare away predators. Uh, sheep have nothing. They are completely defenseless. If a wolf comes, they're in a lot of trouble. Another thing about sheep, they're kind of stupid. Uh, they have no sense of direction. You leave them alone, they'll probably be like my mom's blind dog, where my mom's blind dog will just keep walking in circles over and over until it gets tired. Sheep, they'll graze and they'll eat their grass and they'll graze along and then they look up and they're like, where am I? And they might have just traveled two or three feet, but if they're by themselves, they are lost completely. And uh, I realized that sheep, we are a lot like sheep. We are defenseless. We have nothing to use against the lusts and desires of this world, including the devil himself. Now again, he does exist. He doesn't want you to believe that he's real. He wants you to think it's all fairy tale. He wants you to believe in this higher power that will love you no matter what you do. You can kill, you can do whatever you want, and it's fine. But there is a God, there is a Jesus, his son, there is a Holy Spirit, and there is a devil. So we are defenseless against the devil. We have nothing to stop him. I used to always think when I was younger, I would want to fight this guy one-on-one, -on -one, you know, show him who's boss. I'd get my butt kicked. I would get destroyed in every way, shape, and form, and then I'd be damned because I, I don't use what God has given me, which is his son. Excuse me. Not only are we defenseless, but we don't have a sense of direction. You know, we, we think we do, since I was 12, I've been praying for one thing and one thing only, a good Christian woman and a lot of good Christian kids. And I wasn't born and raised in a Christian home, uh, wasn't strong believers, but for some reason it was always instilled in me. I, I always believed in the Bible. I don't know why. Even science teachers, my old religion teachers used to ridicule me for it. They're like, you believe the Bible word for word? Yeah. I don't know why. It makes sense. And I think that God put that in my heart. Now, I... I used to just look towards girls and always think, this is the one, this is the wife, this is the girl, this is who I want to be with, and then that was my direction in life. I just wanted that wife, I just wanted that home, I wanted that family, I didn't care about money, I still to this day don't care about money, I just want that girl. But then God takes them out of your life and you lose all sense of direction. You're like, what the hell, where do I go now? What do I do now? I have to start all over again? You, you may be after a job. You may think, oh, I have direction in life. I'm, I'm going to school. I'm going to get the job. I'm going to get the girl. I'm going to get my kids. Everything's going to work out fine. Well, let's just say everything does work out fine. What happens when your kids are grown up and gone and they don't need you anymore? I talk to many adults who, who feel they're not needed. And it sucks. And they're tired and they don't know what else is left for them. Now let's just say everything doesn't go your way, which the majority of people it won't. Let's say that is your direction. You go to school and you're like, I'm gonna finish school, I'm gonna get that job and that's it. What happens when you find out later on, this isn't what I want. I don't wanna go to school for this anymore. This isn't what I want. Then you're lost. Let's say you get that school, but then you can't get the job. You're lost. What happens you get that job and then you find that girl, you find that husband, and you get a divorce. Then you're lost. You're like, what was this all for? Where am I going? What's going to happen to me now? 
What happens if, if your goal is like me and you want a girl and you want the kids and what happens if there's a miscarriage? What happens if you lose that baby? You become lost. You become hurt. You don't know what's going on. We have no direction. You may think you have a direction, but for as, as short of a period as we are on this earth, that direction, that little tiny one, it, it's just like a sheep where you're, you're crawling to the next section of grass to eat. But then once you get your fill, you realize, where the heck am I going? But there is good news. Just like sheep, we have a shepherd. Sheep have a shepherd. When a sheep, a good shepherd will protect a sheep from, from a wolf. If a wolf comes, the, sheep, the shepherd will use his rod and protect them. A good one, at least. When a sheep gets lost and they're wandering and they don't know where the heck they are, they hear the voice of their shepherd and it comforts them and they come to them. Just like my mom. My, my mom's dog runs around in circles all the time, doesn't know where anything or anyone is because he's blind. But when he hears my mom's voice, he comes. When we are attacked, when we are consumed by the lusts of the world, the desires of the world, and by the temptations of the devil, by, the, by the, the evil around us. And if you don't think the world's evil, just turn on the TV. It doesn't take long to realize where this world is going, where it was a hundred years ago till now. Or even when I was a kid till now, TV's changed a whole lot and everything has changed. So <clears throat> just as we're defenseless against the world, we have a good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He will protect us from the devil. He will protect us from the lusts and the desires of the world. Just like we have no real direction in life, just like a sheep has no direction, God gives us a direction. Jesus says, I know my sheep, they listen to my voice and they will follow me. Jesus might be calling you, you just gotta listen. Go to the good shepherd, he protects you, he saves you, he gives you direction, he gives you purpose. Every breakup I've ever had, I'd be lost right after. I'm like, man, what the heck was that for? What was the purpose? What was going on? But for the first time, yeah, I'm heartbroken. I lost someone. But it's okay, because now I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do I need to learn? Where do I need to go? Direct me. Use me. What do you want me to do? I will do it. That's what we need. And we can only have that if we have Jesus as our Savior. If you, if you submit to him, if you surrender to him, stop resisting him and go to him. He's there for a reason. Now, there's two absolute truths I want to tell you. Number one, God loves you. He absolutely loves you. He gave his only son up for us just so that if we believe, we can live forever. Okay, and truth number two, God knows everything. He is in control of every situation. You surrender to him, you, you submit to him, and he will clarify things. Okay, there is a reason why we go through certain trials. If you're a Christian, if you are, you've given your life to God, you've given your life to Jesus, you accept him, there's a reason why you go through trials and, and hardships. And sometimes it's because God's want, wanting you closer or God is trying to direct you or teach you something or show you something. If you're not a Christian, if you're a lukewarm, you're not sure where you are, you, you believe but not so much, uh, you don't believe that Jesus is the only way, well then God is going to keep putting these obstacles in your life and keep smacking you in the face till you come to him, till you believe. He's going to give you some pain and it seems unfair. It's like, Lord, why are you hurting me? Why are you doing this? Why, why can't you just give me what I want? Why can't I just be happy? Why can't you bless me, Lord? But that's where you have to understand. The Bible, God says that our life is like a vapor in the wind. Think about it. If what I'm saying is true, if what I'm saying is absolutely correct, that means we have eternal life. We either go down one path, which is hell, or we have eternal salvation with God. If that's the truth, that means God may put something that hurts you, and it sucks, and it's hard, and he may put that in your life for now, but 
What, is it going to hurt for a few weeks, a few months, maybe a few years? But what is a few years compared to eternal life? Our life is like vapor in the mist. It just goes away. It disappears. It's nothing. What is, what? what's the longest life? You know, maybe 100 years. I'm probably going to live till I'm 60, 70. I don't know. I have no idea. I may die tomorrow. I may die today. And this life is nothing. It's just a quick, it goes. Compared to eternal life, it's nothing. So God may be putting an obstacle in your life, but it's because he's calling out to you. He's like, would you reach to me? Come to me. I am calling you. There is a reason why you're watching this video right now. If you're going through a hardship, God is calling you. Jesus is calling you. You are his sheep. Listen to his voice and go to him. There is a reason why this is all happening. It's good news. There is hope. There is a way, and Jesus is that way. So don't give up. Go to him. I, uh, I just want to give you guys a bit of a, a prayer in the end. And again, you can say it with me. You can repeat it after. You could just let it sink in. And that prayer is, Lord, I, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge my sin, Lord. I know that I'm a sinner. My sin is before me and I am sorry. Please forgive me. Jesus, please, I can hear your voice. You are my shepherd. I want to follow you now. I submit and I surrender my life to you, Lord. I will take up my daily cross. Please help me follow you. Please help me serve you. Create in me a pure heart so that you can use me. Lord, your word says that Without faith, we can't please you. And Lord, I have trouble believing sometimes. So Lord, I ask you, because you give generously, give me faith. Give me as much faith as it takes to please you, because that is what I want to do. I ask this in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I'm just going to finish up with one last thing. And someone told me they don't want to ever come to Jesus, come to know Jesus out of fear. And I understand that, and uh, I don't want to try to scare anybody, but it's just an absolute fact. You need to know this. A lot of problems with our, our us being young, if anyone's young watching this, or, or even 50, 60, that's still considerably young compared to God. <coughs> you don't know when your last day is. I have no idea. I could die when I pull out my driveway when I go to work today. I could die tomorrow. I could die in 10 years. I could die in 50 years. I have no idea. But if you feel a pulling, if you feel like this makes sense, then that's Jesus calling you. It's not me. I scrub toilets for a living. I have no education. Whatever little knowledge, understanding I have, I can't boast about it because it was given by God. So if you feel that calling, if you feel that tug in your heart, if this makes sense, give your life to Jesus. He says, come as you are. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the sinners. Read the Bible. Everyone who came to Jesus were sinners. They were apologizing. They wanted, they wanted to hear good news. They wanted to hear hope. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you did wrong. It's fine. I do it all the time. I'm wrong too. I failed. I'm a sinner. But because of what Jesus did, I have hope. And you have hope too. Just as long as you go to him, Jesus. We all want to make up a God. We all want to say, my God does this, my God does that. And we all want to go based on our feelings. Don't follow your feelings. Okay, our feelings mislead us all the time. You know how many times my feelings misled me in so many directions, so many ways? Don't follow your feelings. Follow what God's word says. And this pull in your heart or tears in your eyes, that comes from God. Call to Jesus. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. All right, guys, I didn't want to make this video long. 15 minutes is a little long, but uh, God bless, and I, I hope this helps. If you need have any questions, please ask. Take care.